Okay, so back to the PKI. Okay, so again, we're just going to look kind of at high level, three different approaches you could use to PKI. So what's the simplest thing you could do? Simplest imaginable thing is to have one universal CA for the entire known universe, okay? That would be great. It would simplify things. I wouldn't have to have a hundred certificates sitting there. I would have one, right? I would have one certificate, uh, one sort of root certificate, because all I need is VeriSign. All I need to know about is VeriSign in order to make this work. Uh, <clears throat> problem is, there's a se several problems. You have to trust the CA, right? Is there one organization that the entire universe trusts? I don't think so, okay? And if you don't trust the CA, the whole system's useless to you, okay? So as a practical matter, you know, it sounds good. And in fact, when public key cryptography was sort of first getting up and rolling, there were proposals, you know, for the US government to set up, you know, some public key infrastructure for everybody. And, you know, fortunately they decided not to do that because it's been a, a mess. Okay, so you could relax that a little bit. You could say, okay, instead of having a single trusted CA, we'll have, you know, a few. Not, you know, millions, you know, maybe a hundred, you know, something like that. A small number of, of CAs out there that we can uh, trust. And this is what's actually used today. If you look in your browser, you have a bunch of certificates, you know, but you don't have thousands. You probably have a few hundred, and some of those are for special, special things. But if you look, you'll see VeriSign, you'll see Thought. There's a few others, okay? There's a relatively small number of, uh, of uh, companies out there that are doing uh, this sort of thing. Okay, so the number I have here is like you may have 80 or more uh, that you need to worry about. Uh, I don't know if that's accurate today, but it's something on that order, okay? Okay, and again, the user gets to decide. You know, if you don't like VeriSign, don't trust anything signed by VeriSign. You can go in and say, hey, I don't trust VeriSign. I'm not going to accept their uh, stuff that they've signed. And you can accept someone else, Thought or whoever, you know, whoever or some of the other uh, big ones. Okay. Okay, well, if we could have a, we could have one, or we could have a few, or we could have a lot. Okay, right. Let's just make everybody a CA. Why not? Everybody can be a CA. Well, let's call that the anarchy model. <laughs> okay, so basically everyone's a CA. That's fine. Everyone can sign. You can create public and private key pairs. You can give the key pub, pub, private key to the right person, and you can sign this certificate, right? So anybody can, in principle, create a certificate. That's fine. But now it's up to you as the user of this system to decide whether you trust the person who signed this or not, okay? I may trust Alice to have signed this, I may trust Bob, but I may not trust Trudy, okay? That sort of thing. So believe it or not, this is actually used in practice, okay? PGP, pretty good privacy, which is very widely used uh, in, in practice, uh, uses this approach, and they call it the web of trust. So you trust somebody and they trust somebody else, so you trust them, it sort of has this sort of transitive you know, flavor to it. Uh, but okay, so why is it anarchy? You know, here's an example, okay? Suppose I have a certificate, it's signed by Frank. I don't know who Frank is, right? I can't know everybody out there, but I do trust Bob, and Bob says Alice is trustworthy, and Alice vouches for Frank, so should I accept the certificate? But you have to make those decisions, okay? It's up to you, but you have to decide. Yeah. Do you get scenarios where, say, you trust Bob, and you trust Alice, and Bob says Frank is good, and Alice says Frank is bad? Uh, I suppose you could, yeah. <laughs> I don't see why not. You decide. It's all up to you, right? I mean, it's total freedom to decide which ones you trust. So if you want to be really cautious, maybe you only trust things that are signed directly by Alice and directly by Bob, because you know them and trust them. But, you know, you may get something that Alice vouches for Frank, you know, and, you know, and you have to make that decision. Okay, but again, it's up to you. You know, as a practical matter, you know, people do use this, uh, but these are kind of like, you know, you have to be pretty serious about your security. You have to be willing to put the time and thought into it, or you just, you know, uh, really haven't gained much, right? Okay, so anyway, PKI, it's a, it's a significant issue. You have to decide, you have to make these sorts of decisions, you have to set up some sort of structure, you have to have a certificate of authority, you have to have this trusted third party, sort of certificate of authority. 
there there's in other words there's more to actually using public key cryptography in the real world than just generating public and private keys okay okay confidentiality in the real world so the question here is we have we now have two very different ways to provide confidentiality we have symmetric ciphers right and we have public key systems what should we use how should we use those well, okay, what's the advantages of each? Okay, what's the advantage of a symmetric cipher over a public key system? It's faster. It's faster. It's much faster. Okay, orders of magnitude faster. Something on the order of a thousand times faster. So you encrypt a thousand times more data for the same amount of computational effort with a symmetric cipher as you can with a public key system. Okay, then why in the heck would we ever use public key systems for confidentiality, for encrypting our data? Is there any possible advantage there? Secret key exchange? What? On the key exchange? Uh, key, key exchange, okay, we don't have secret keys. We have no. symmetric keys, yes. and we have public and private keys, because secret keys kind of add ambiguous here. Okay, right, because you do get some advantages with public keys, okay? You don't have this key distribution problem, okay? You don't have to trust John Walker to go and distribute the keys for you. You still do have a PKI, so it's an issue, but it's uh, once that's set up, you can exchange all the symmetric keys you want. So, okay, so the big benefit of symmetric keys is speed. Public keys, you get this idea of signatures and non-repudiation. That's not really confidentiality, but that's, that's definitely an advantage there. But, you know, as far as confidentiality, you know, not having to worry about distributing keys is really a, a big deal. So the question really is, can we get the best of both worlds? Okay, can we get the advantages of both of these systems uh, simultaneously? Uh, just a reminder of our notation, I think we just did this three or four slides ago, but anyway, that was another day. Uh, so again, if we sign with the uh, private key, that's the square brackets, right? If we use the public key, that's the curly brackets. Uh, our symmetric key notation, uh, we encrypt the plain text with the key K to get the ciphertext. We decrypt the ciphertext with the key K to get the plain text, right? Okay. All right. Okay, so the way to use public, uh, way to use cryptography in the real world is to get the best of all, okay? A hybrid crypto system. We're gonna use both public keys and symmetric keys and kind of try to get the best of all. So the idea is something like this. Alice and Bob have public and private keys, okay? So they each have digital certificates, they have the corresponding private keys in the right place. Uh, they're, Certificates are signed by certificate authorities they trust, and all, all that sort of stuff is set up in advance. And then what can you do? Well, Alice can just generate a symmetric key, just at random, generate a symmetric key K, encrypt it with Bob's public key, send it to Bob. Okay, now Bob can decrypt that, and now what do they know? What do they share? Symmetric key. They share a symmetric key that they can use to encrypt the data. All right, so they will now use that symmetric key to encrypt their data that goes back and forth. Okay, now, what's the benefit of using the public key stuff here? We can share the symmetric key without having John Walker or some spy <coughs> delivering the keys for us. Okay, so that's really a big benefit. Okay, what's the benefit of using the symmetric key stuff here? Performance. It's way faster. We could be encrypting gigabytes of data here, right? And we can get the speed benefit of symmetric keys. If we try to do all this with public keys, it would take forever, okay? So we only do a little bit of encryption as far as number of bits with public key cryptography. Most of the data is actually encrypted with symmetric keys, but that little bit of encryption is an important little bit of encryption, right? Okay, it's the thing that gets the whole thing started. Okay, now in practice, we couldn't actually do it this way. There's a problem here. Uh, and think about it. If you're Bob, do you know you're talking to Alice here? Why not? Because public keys are public. There you go. Okay, this guy's ready for the test already. Okay, so yeah, because anybody could do this, right? You could put Trudy here. Trudy knows Bob's public key. She could encrypt that and say, hey, I'm Alice, you know, send me all your secret information. When he does, you know, you're, you're host. Okay, so we've got to do something 
more here to be sure we're talking to Alice before we start encrypting our data, okay? And that's chapters 9 and 10, so it'll be a little while before we get to that, but there's more to do here. But, in, but the idea, the concept is this, okay? Get the benefits of both the public keys and the symmetric keys.